Okay, let's have a think about spot metering. Some of you have been asking me um, in the comments to explain what spot metering is and how to use it properly, etc., etc. So I thought I'd have a really quick um, demonstration on here, talk quickly about the metering systems in the camera, particularly the Fujifilm system, and hopefully that will give you a bit of an understanding about how you can use it for your photography. So here we go. Let's put a clock on this, shall we? Let's go for a three minute clock and see what see if I can keep to it this time. Now, when your camera is looking at a scene, so let's just say you are standing just here and there you are with your camera and you are looking out at this mountain scene. But initially you're looking out slightly higher into the clouds and there's the sun's over here shining and so here is very even light. You just got clouds and, you know, blue sky, normal day. Um, and uh, it's even light. Therefore, your camera doesn't really need much help to get the, um, the scene right, because it's all very flat and even. But here are your clouds and things. And then you add a mountain into this and you've got trouble because suddenly the camera is looking out and it sees nice, even light. Then there's this great big thing in front, which is darker. Now that's the problem. What happens is, is that the camera then goes, ah, oh, do I use the nice even light or do I use the dark mountain to expose and to work out how to kind of balance and expose um, the photo for you? We can do it because our human eye is incredible and we are able to see and balance exposure in such an incredible way that it's hard for us to understand how difficult it is for our cameras to do this. And it's called a dynamic range. The range of light is basically different between different objects. So your camera has to decide how it um, processes this and what it does. So it uses metering modes. In the old days, like on the old kind of Hasselblads and things, you had your own light meter, which you used to, to work out yourself. But now we've got digital cameras. Thankfully, it's done for us. So there are different ways. Firstly, you've got in the Fujifilm system, you will see, let me just get rid of my, my man or lady, whoever it is. Um, okay, so I've got them written here so I don't forget them. You have got your center weighted. Center weighted, you'll see, looks like this, something like that. That's center weighted. Then what happens here is that the camera, in fact, I've got it written down so I didn't get it wrong. Um, what happens here is that the camera basically weighs up the whole scene, okay? So it uses the whole scene around, but gives primary emphasis to the center of the scene. And it looks at all the different objects, all the different lights and says, but actually we're gonna mainly take from the center and we'll use that bit in the center to measure what the light should look like. That would mean that if your thing in the middle is really dark and everything else is really bright, you may get a funny exposure because it's trying to use everything um, together to, to get it right. So that's center weighted. <laughs> I need to look, this white ball is gonna fall down again. Um, the next one is average and it just does this. Now, average I think is pretty average because I don't use this one very much. They say it's good for landscape photography and yeah, maybe it's all right, but I tend to use spot metering myself. But basically the average one here, it does exactly what you think. It, it takes a reading from the whole area, gr gives equal weight to everything and says, there you go, there's the average light, and then hopefully it's okay. Well, that works for some things, but if you've got a backlit scene and a very bright, someone very bright in the foreground, you're gonna end up with a bit of a mess. So that's the average one. Then you've got this one, and it's got like a little box here, box here. Badly drawn, of course, I am no artist and a little circle thing, something like that. Anyway, basically that's the multi. And what that is doing is that is literally taking 200, it says 256 separate zones. It divides up your scene. So you've got your, your frame here and all your little dots for your focus points. Here yeah, they all are. And there's your scene and you're looking through and what happens is, is that the camera is 
choosing, it's breaking this all up into 256 different zones and it's selecting the light from all of them to decide what your um, exposure should be. And yeah, it does that. It could be helpful depending on what you're doing. It's weighing it up for you. It might help with some backlit scenes, perhaps. Um, but yes, but my favorite one is this one. Just a little spot. Spot metering, because what spot metering does, and it's really clever, it gives, the, gives you the power. Because what you do is it just takes 2% of the scene and it decides on the metering based on that 2%. So let's just say you have got a scene here and you've got somebody walking. There they are, my great aunt. Someone walking down the road and there's a, they're very dark, okay? So they're in a really kind of shadow area. But back here is lots of sunlight beaming behind them. And you take a picture, you're like, whoa, what are we gonna do? This is gonna be difficult to get this exposure right. But you really want this person properly exposed. If you use any of the other modes, it would try and use the back lit and the front lit and it would all get a bit messy and you get a bit of an uneven um, photo and you would lack contrast. But if you use your, um, your, your finder, your autofocus point, and you put it on this person here, what will happen is it will use 2% of the picture. So it will use basically this person's head to decide the metering and they would be nicely in focus and it would set your, fo sorry, not focus, they would, their exposure would be perfect on them. And then everything else would basically take second place. Now what that means is if you are shooting in black and white, and this is why I use it a lot if I'm doing street photography. Because what happens in street photography, if you're shooting black and white, you really want the contrast. You want the dark areas and the light areas, because that's what black and white is. It's, it's the contrast between light and dark. And so you want to basically put your exposure there and say, right, everything here be perfectly um, lit and then everything else, it could be really dark here and really bright here, or you can have a tunnel and a little bit of light coming through. And when you see those photos where you've got just bits and pockets of light and you're hunting for those bits of light, if you've ever struggled to get those bits of light in your photo, if you're like, ah, oh, it's always so like, you know, blah, and just multi, and the light's everywhere, but you really wanna choose where it is, then you choose spot metering because you are choosing with your AF point you basically select that area and you watch it as you move on spot metering, as you move your AF point around, you will notice that the light is continually changing. Now that's the great thing about the Fujifilm system and, and basically mirrorless systems because of the EVF, our electronic viewfinder. The great thing about that is we can see directly through the lens exactly the effect that the spot metering is having. So as you move about your um, pointer, you can see you know, it goes dark, it goes light, it changes. And I find that really useful because it helps you create a mood. It helps you to create some atmosphere in a photo because you are basically selecting the 2% that you want the, on the camera to choose that it takes the exposure from. So it's very simple. It's not a difficult thing to understand. Spot metering in a nutshell, it lets you choose the exact spot that you want the camera to take the metering from. And that's all it is. Very simple. Um, best thing to do, go out and have a play. Get, go somewhere and just literally just move your pointer around and you'll see where um, the light is and it will give you a great idea as to um, how spot metering works. So I hope that's helpful to you. Oops. <laughs> see you soon.